Labor maintains the power to keep foreign fighters from returning home to Australia should be taken out of Peter Dutton's hands, but is expected to back the laws regardless. Andrea Crothers joins us live now from Parliament House. And Andrea, Labor has concerns expressed by a bipartisan parliamentary committee. That's right, Annalise and Kira. Now, both sides of politics agree that national security when it comes to counterterrorism needs to be strengthened, but it's really about the details here that this clash is brewing. Now, a joint intelligence committee recommended that the power to smack suspected foreign fighters with these exclusion orders, which would see them uh, unable to return home to Australia for up to two years. Labor believes that it should be uh, taken out of the government's hands and should actually go to a judge. Now, that is as recommended by that committee. Now, the government rejected that recommendation. Labor proposes to put amendments forward which would see that recommendation reflected. Anthony Albanese telling Sky News that uh, he would like to see national secu sorry, security agencies go back to the committee to explain why they were ignored. Well, we'll give, uh, we'll give consideration at, at the time, Laura. We'll have our, our normal processes will occur. Uh, but I'd say to, uh, I'd say to the government, uh, start governing in the national interest. Uh, actually listen to uh, the recommendations that were made by the Joint Intelligence Committee. Now, meanwhile, the government is standing by it. They say that they've done the right thing. Here's Erica Betts. The Labor Party are trying to find a fig leaf to hide behind in not supporting this legislation. The simple fact is there were 18 recommendations, 16 of which have been picked up by the government, and our national security experts do believe that the minister should have the final say in relation to these temporary exclusion orders. Now, if Labor's amendments don't succeed, it says that it will uh, support the legislation. A vote is expected on those temporary exclusion orders this week. Andrea Labor also on the attack over revelations. Another asylum seeker boat has arrived. That's right. There's those revelations that another asylum seeker boat landed in Christmas Island carrying what's believed to be some 20 uh, Sri Lankan asylum seekers. Now, Labor is accusing the government of leaking this information conveniently to help reignite the momentum to, for their push to repeal the Medivac bill, but Labor already says it will not be budging. This has only been put in the Australian newspaper by the usual, the usual suspects. And I, I am prepared to say that's obviously been put there by the government. And it's no accident that... Well, well because who, who else has put it there? The asylum seekers themselves? Now, whether the government will get this repeal through will all come down to the Senate, where it's very much a numbers game. They will need some key crossbenchers to side with them. Senator Alliance Senator, key crossbencher Rex Patrick, has already made his uh, position firm. Uh, the Medivac legislation doesn't open the floodgates. The Medivac legislation only applies to people who are already on um, uh, Manus and Nauru. And indeed, it's uh, not a, a pathway to permanent residency. It is a temporary measure to bring someone back to Australia or, or to Australia for the purposes of providing medical attention that is not available uh, uh, in PNG. So it does appear it will come down to Tasmanian Senator Jackie Lambie, who is yet to declare her hand. Kieran Annalise.